I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. I want to make my case that the climax, the final duel of the good, the bad, and the ugly, is the best scene in cinema history. From storytelling, filming, perspective, it just nails it. They tell so much in these nine minutes, with most time without even needing words. So we're going to go through this step by step. I'm going to break this down. Uh, but first, if you haven't seen this movie all the way through, you need to go watch it. Um, you know, this movie is over three hours long. And to get to this point, building up these characters and the three men's relationships with each other. I remember I remember the first time I watched this movie, just the goosebumps I had. Just because you have no idea what's going to happen. You know, to a lot of people on the outside that have seen it, they're like, oh yeah, that's obvious. But the first time you watch this movie, you have no clue. And that's because this movie does something special. This movie builds up all three men as equals. All three of them have their strengths, they have relationships with each other, and all of them have reasons to hate each other. This isn't a classic movie where, oh, there's one guy that's the good guy, one that's the bad guy. They build them up, but you obviously know the good guy's going to win. There's three guys that are all equals, okay? So you have no clue what's going to happen. So we're going to start with a play-by-play -play of this. What has happened is they have... They are going, of course, after the gold, um, and Tuco has gotten there first. And, of course, he's digging it up, but uh, the good, um, Blondie, was smart enough not to give him the real grave, of course, because that gives up all his power and reason for them to keep him alive. So let's start this. great right there. I mean, obviously, you know, classic trope having the hero's theme song play, but uh, notice how he, Clint Eastwood almost accidentally takes Tuco's hand off with that shovel. Could have had an injury on set. It would be a lot easier with that. Simple storytelling here. Um, as Tuco slowly reaches for his gun, Blondie, of course, is ready. He's not going to allow that to happen. And Tuco gives him the shrug like, eh, worth a shot. You understand. And again, uh, the actor almost just Tuco's, took Tuco's head off with the shovel for a second time. Two can dig a lot quicker than one. Dig. See, now this starts a great dynamic where right now Angel Eyes thinks he has all the power. He knows where the gold is. He has a gun on both of them. They'll dig up the gold, I'll shoot them, I get the gold. But of course he doesn't realize that Blondie still holds all the power, as he's about, about to reveal, because of course, this is not where the gold is. If you shoot me, you won't see a cent of that money. Why? Tell you what, because there's nothing in there. You thought I'd trust you? Two hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. We're gonna have to earn it. Ah. Stone. I 
Like that? Now, this is an interesting and important dynamic. Angel Eyes, the man shown right there, trusts Blondie. He thinks, okay, he really does know what grave it's in, and he really will write it on that rock. And now Blondie's referred to as the good in this movie, but if you've seen the movie, he's not really a good guy. But Angel Eyes thinks he is the good. Uh, he thinks that he will tell the truth, and this, of course, comes back to bite him. Uh, so that's an interesting and important dynamic right there. And I also want to note, note from this point on, we're 2 minutes 45 seconds into this video, that from this point for about another 5 minutes not a single word is spoken, yet more story is told than most entire movies. Now, the other two realize what Blondie is suggesting. Um, they're all realizing, you know, none of us are just going to give up this gold without a fight, and there's no way we're all going to agree to split it. So it has to go down right now. Um, and, of course, we can thank Ennio Morricone for creating one of the best uh, soundtracks in the history of film. I love this shot right here. The actor that plays Tuco uh, deserves more fame than he has. This look right here that he's given Angel Eyes, like, just, well, it's on. Every man for himself. We'll see what happens. Just wonderful acting right here. Now that right there, I'm going to re-show it, is my favorite part of this whole scene, okay? Now Angel Eyes here, the, the guy in dark, and of course you have your classic symbolism, the, the bad, the, the bad guy is wearing all black, that's, that's classic, but as you watch right here, he has to get between Blondie and Tuco. And notice... how he turns his back to the good, to Blondie. He's not turning his back on Tuco because once again, you know, of course they're not friends, but he thinks that Blondie is an honest man. He thinks that Blondie will not shoot him in the back, but he is not confident that the ugly Tuco won't shoot him right in the back. So he's, he's very showing that he uh, turns his back to Blondie and not to Tuco. And of course, it's just great imagery that they're in a cemetery.
Okay, the music stops here, and now here we are. Three hours of film building up the history between these three men. They all hate each other. Blondie left Tuco to die. Tuco left Blondie to die. Angel Eyes and Blondie have had their fights. Angel Eyes tortured Tuco. They all have reasons to hate and kill each other. And now we're here. All three of them are facing off. And your first time watching this, this these next few minutes are the longest minutes in your life as you have no idea what's going to happen. And uh, the director, the genius Sergio Leone, sure takes his time with this scene. And here we go. Now, we just can analyze what each of these men says in their eyes, all right? So Tuco, his eyes are quickly darting between them. Tuco doesn't know what to do. Which of these guys is more of a threat? Which one do I shoot first? Which one's going to shoot at me? Who needs to be my target? Because I can only fire at one at a time. Now, of course, Blondie seems like the cool guy. Very relaxed, and that's, of course, because he has complete control of the situation. And he knows it. And it's revealed why later. Angel Eyes, looking less scared than Tuco. And as you can see here, he's looking at Tuco and then he looks left to Blondie. And their eyes meet. And it becomes more of a squint. And you see that Angel Eyes realizes that his biggest threat is Blondie. That's who he needs to shoot. He's the fastest draw. That's who he's shooting. You can see it in his eyes. I love the shots they show of their hands, just the storytelling there. You see Blondie's hands, completely still, completely calm. You see Tuco's hands, they're twitching a little bit. He's nervous. Who wouldn't be, especially if you had no idea what was about to happen. Great little shot right there where Angel Eyes starts to creep towards his gun, but then Blondie looks at him and he falls right back. Not while he's looking. And you can see right here, I mean, he glances over at Tuco again for a second, but basically from this point on, Angel Eyes is locked on to Blondie. He's not go. looking between the two of them anymore. He's picked his target and he's focused on him. Never has five minutes of three men staring at each other been so interesting. These close-up shots of their eyes can just tell so much with so little. Of course, you see Angel Eyes trying to act calm, trying to look cool, slowly going for his gun. You see Tuco, eyes wide open, obviously freaked out.
And there it is. That's the climax. We see that both Tuco and Blondie pull and shoot for Angel Eyes. Angel Eyes didn't stand a chance. He was kind of screwed from the start just because of where his gun was on the opposite side of his body. It's going to take longer for him to draw it. Um, but of course, Tuco's gun was unloaded, so it didn't matter who he shot at. Uh, Blondie had unloaded Tuco's gun beforehand when they were last together. We learned that in a couple minutes. So now, Angel Eyes is down. The two are left standing. Tuco's gun is unloaded. We have a great shot here. I missed it. Great shot where Blondie cocks his gun again. Tuco flinches. I mean, thinking, obviously, I'm next. He's going to kill me and take all the money. But he doesn't. He finishes off Angel Eyes, who beautifully falls right into a grave. And we'll put his hat and his gun in there with him. Okay, so now we can analyze what each man was thinking and why they shot at who they shot at, okay? Angel Eyes had the worst scenario, right? He had to shoot at one of the guys he was in the worst position, his gun was the farthest across from him, and both guys were aiming for him. He was pretty screwed from the start. And even if he had killed Blondie, he was foolish to trust him because, of course, we find out that Blondie didn't actually write the information on the rock. Um, so things don't work out for Angel Eyes. And then you get the dynamic between Tuco and Blondie. Now, Blondie could easily right now just blast Tuco, take all the money, but he doesn't. And a lot of that is because he knew that Tuco's gun was unloaded, right? So Blondie only had to worry about one guy. He only had to worry about Angel Eyes, while both Tuco and Angel Eyes had to think about both of them, right? So Blondie knew who he had to shoot at the whole time. Only one guy has a loaded gun. And now Angel Eyes, or Blondie sees that Tuco didn't shoot at him, right? He tested Tuco, and if Tuco had aimed and tried to shoot his gun at Blondie, then he probably wouldn't still be alive. But he tested Tuco, and Tuco passed the test by shooting at Blondie, and not him. Now, why would Tuco choose to shoot at uh, Angel Eyes? Well, I think it's because he's smart enough to know not to trust Blondie. Blondie has screwed him multiple times in this movie, so Tuco is probably thinking maybe he didn't actually write the information on that rock, um, and if, we, if I kill him, then I'm never going to find out where that gold is. Or maybe he just wanted to kill Angel Eyes for torturing him. But there's really an interesting dynamic in why each man chooses to do what he does. You pig! You wanted to get me killed! When did you unload it? Last night. You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns, and those who dig. You dig. Of course, that's the most famous line from the whole movie. Really badass. And now, uh, another reason for him not to kill Tuco is he needs someone to dig it up, and it's not going to be him. Carson told me it was the grave marked unknown right beside Arch Stanton. Huh? Go ahead. 
so we learn that if Blondie had been shot, the other two could not have possibly found the money. See in this world. Let's get to the perfect shot here. There we go. Um, and yeah, it's not to people who maybe just watched the movie once. They might think, oh, Blondie and Tuco don't shoot at each other because they're friends. They're not friends. They both left each other to die. But Tuco shot at who he thought was his threat and who didn't have the information that Tuco needed to get the money. Blondie shot at the guy that he knew had a loaded gun and tested Tuco to see if he would shoot at him. Um, so that's my claim that this is the greatest piece of cinematography of all time. Again, from about two minutes all the way to when Tuco says, when did you unload it? Not a single word is said, yet paragraphs of story are told. Um, we don't see movies like this anymore where multiple guys are built up as equals and any one of them could come out on top. It's always the good guy and the bad guy. Um, and I think this is a work of genius. So I've been wanting to get this out for a long time. That's my spiel. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. And I hope you haven't made it this far if you haven't seen it. But if you haven't, go watch this movie. In fact, go watch all three of the Dollars trilogy because they are all great. Anyways, sayonara.